All right, everyone, welcome back for the second video of the night. Um, I'm talking a little bit quieter because everybody in my house is sleeping. Um, I am actually going to talk about something extremely personal, and I really hope that this will help raise some aware awareness. Um, and I really hope that this doesn't offend anyone or anything like that because that is not at all what the, this is meant to do or anything like that. Um, I'm really putting myself out here by talking about this, but it's something that I really, really have had, you know, on my chest for a long time and I think it would feel good for me to talk about it and I think it might help others as well. Maybe it won't, maybe it'll be too much for them. Maybe it will help. Um, I'm just really not sure. But, so, you know, my husband and I, we have one son together. Um, I only have one child, to make that clear. I don't have, you know, I didn't have like a child before him or anything like that. He doesn't have any other children. We have one child together. And, you know, before we had him, we had two miscarriages. Um, it was heartbreaking. You know, I was extremely depressed. I couldn't understand why. You know, I hated myself because I felt like something was wrong with me. You know, why can't I have babies, this and that. At that time, I was 20. Let's see, I had my son when I was 23, so I was about 22 to, t yeah, about 22. Um, you know, I was really upset. Um few months after that, probably about two or three months after that, I ended up getting pregnant with my son. And obviously, I had him. He's healthy. He's happy. Um, my blood type is A negative. So when you have a negative blood type, you have to get a Rogam shot. Now, for some reason, um, the two times that I miscarried, I didn't get the Rogam shot right away. You normally get it, I think, at 28 weeks. Well, with my son, I got it right when I found out that I was pregnant, and I ended up carrying him to term. After my son, um, you know, I breastfed him for a year, so we weren't really trying to get pregnant during that time because it's already rough for me to get pregnant, and I was breastfeeding, and, you know, I just really, it wasn't the right time. Um, and then, we have had three miscarriages after him. The last one was a year ago, last December of 2014. Um, unfortunately, I have not been successful to get pregnant again since then. I have tried fertility treatments, um, not in vitro or anything like that, just hormones and different things like that to try to, you know, help me get pregnant and then help me hold the pregnancy. Um, but unfortunately, those didn't work either. It's really hard, you know, when you really want your child to have siblings because I have a lot of siblings and I can't give that to him. I obviously now that I'm older, you know, I'm not old, I'm 26, but now that I'm older I understand that it's not my fault. I used to always think that it was my fault, like why can't I do this? Women are made not just to have kids, okay, I'm not saying that that's the only purpose for women, but women are made and they are made to grow life and nourish life and I can't do that. Um, you know, we have a very slim chance that we will end up having another one, but it's not certain, we don't know, you know, we have taken a break from the medications because it's just too much work, it's too hard. It's not fun, and it's, you know, you have to track everything every day. Um, those of you that are in my situation, I know that you understand how hard it is. Um, I'm not saying that I'm giving up, but we're just taking a little break, and if it happens, it happens. Um, you know, my husband is 10 years older than me, so if, you know, in the next year, if we don't end up getting pregnant, then we'll probably do the hormones again and, you know, try, you know, because obviously I don't have a problem getting pregnant. It's more I have a problem holding the pregnancy. And I really think that it's because of that Rogam shot. I'm not getting it early enough. 
I think that, and my new doctor that I've been talking to has said that what she's going to do is as soon as I get a positive test and it's confirmed with an ultrasound, she's going to give me that shot and see if that is the reason. Um, when you have a negative blood type, what happens is your body sees pregnancy as a foreign object in your body. And basically it will fight, your fight the pregnancy off, which can cause you to have a miscarriage. Now, it doesn't happen to everyone. Um, some people who have negative blood types have perfect pregnancies. They have no issues at all. Um, unfortunately, I, you know, have a lot of issues. Um, I want a lot of people to understand that this is something that is extremely hard for women that are in this situation. So, there was a girl, like I said in the last video, that, if you didn't watch that video, then you didn't hear it, but... Who actually said to me says the woman who can't have kids now of course you know I acted like it didn't bother me but that was one of the most hurtful things that somebody has ever said to me um, it was extremely hard I cried like that whole night to my husband because you know how could you be so cruel to say that to somebody that's something that I can't help um, and it was really hard um, you know, the whole thing is very hard. You know, my husband and I, we obviously want more kids. We talk about it all the time. And, you know, unfortunately, it's not happening yet. Um, now, if we don't have more kids, we do have one. And we are so blessed that we have him. You know, I thank God every day that I have my son. And he is healthy, happy. Um, you know, I had a terrible pregnancy. But it was so worth it because I have him here. He is seriously an angel that God gave me because I was giving up at that time thinking, oh, you know what, I'm never going to be able to have kids. And then here he came and he and my husband both saved me and made me, you know, a better person. And um, for those of you that are in this situation, don't give up. You know, don't let it tear you down that bad to where you give up because you know unless your doctor absolutely says there is no chance at all for you to be able to have children you know um don't give up because there still is that chance there still is a chance that my husband and i can have another child um you know there are tons of support groups that you can talk to or you know if you ever wanted to talk to me about it you could um again my email is talk with k k a y at yahoo.com um if you have any questions about you know the medications i was on or you know how we deal with it or anything like that you're more than welcome to talk to me about it um if you don't want to rena remain anonymous you can leave a comment below and I'm more than happy to answer any questions um, you know it's really hard when I see my friends you know when they have kids or they're getting pregnant and stuff like that and it's like I try but I can't you know and obviously I'm happy for them definitely happy for them I would never say that I'm not happy for somebody because I can't have for you know I'm not able to at this moment um, I would never say, you know, oh, I can't believe that they can have kids and I can't. I'm not that kind of person. I'm so happy for all of you that have been able to successfully have kids. Um, but unfortunately for me, it's just not in the cards right now. I know that God has a plan and eventually we will have another baby. And if it means adoption, it means adoption. If it means, you know, having to do in vitro or any other way that's what it means and i am completely open to an adoption that would be great we have actually talked about having one more of our own and then even adopting because i would love to be able to you know um give a child that has nothing a wonderful life that would really mean a lot to me um if we can't have any more of our own and we just end up deciding to adopt I would still love that opportunity to be able to do that. Um, 
any adoptive parents if you have any advice for me about that that'd be great um you know it's really not an easy road um my pregnancy with my son was not easy i was so sick in the beginning i actually lost like 25 pounds once i was four months i started gaining it back my last two months of pregnancy i was a month and a half i was in full blown labor to the point where i was actually on pain medication because i was having full-on contractions but not dilating and um my birth experience was terrible other than my son being born um the epidural wore off um you know, so I felt all the pain, uh, and I know a lot of you do it without an epidural. I chose to do it with an epidural because I had already been in labor for so long, but of course they weren't going to induce me early and risk the health of my son, especially because I have that high risk of miscarriage. Um, you know, and when you're in this situation, that means that your pregnancies are always high risk. Um, the good part about that is that you get to see your babies a lot more often. Um, but the bad part is, it's like you're always at the doctor, you're always having to get ultrasound, you're always having to get checked out, and it really is very hard on you mentally and physically. Um, you know, like I've said before, I have very severe depression and anxiety, and this adds to it as well. Um, unfortunately... There's nothing I can really do about that. Um, you know, I take medications to help, but they don't take it away completely. Um, I would do anything in the world to be able to be pregnant right now. I would go through that morning sickness again. I would go through that labor for the last month and a half again. I would go through, you know, the epidural not working I would go through it all again to be able to have another one so that my son can have a brother or sister hopefully a brother I love having a boy so hopefully a brother um if I had a girl of course I'd be just as happy um so I don't want you to think that like if I'm against having a girl I'd be just as happy um you know I used to think that I was being punished for the bad things that I've done in my life I used to think all kinds of crazy stuff but now that I'm older, I'm realizing that it's not my fault and there's nothing that I can do other than, you know, what the doctor advises for me to do. Um, I will say that right now I'm a little bit underweight than I normally am, so I need to get back up to the weight that I should be so that I can prepare myself. I think that when I got pregnant with my son, I wasn't really prepared because, you know, I was a little bit we were, you know, partying a lot at that time and, you know, of course as soon as I found out I was pregnant I stopped drinking completely and, you know, carried on with the pregnancy. Um, you know, the crazy part is that my mother-in-law, she's very spiritual and she actually had a dream that I was going to be pregnant and that the, it was going to be a boy and that he was going to call her this certain name and he actually does do that um, I don't know if any of you believe in that kind of stuff, but it's really crazy I don't believe in it so much, but when I hear that stuff, it really is crazy the last pregnancy that I had last year she said that she didn't have a dream she didn't feel anything or anything like that and I ended up miscarrying so it's kind of crazy um, obviously I'm not saying that that's why I miscarried of course not, that would be crazy if I thought that um but I do want to tell all of you women that you're not alone. There are so many women in our situation that feel that they are alone. Because sometimes I do feel alone. You know, especially when, you know, my friends are having kids and stuff like that. You're not alone. There are millions of women who cannot have children or have issues having children. Um... I will say thankfully that my miscarriages have happened early. My heart goes out to all of the women out there who have miscarried, you know, later in your pregnancy or have had a stillbirth or anything like that. I am so sorry that you went through that. I seriously am so sorry. It really breaks my heart to even think about that. It's like making me tear up thinking about it because I can't even imagine going through that. Um, you know, 
having miscarriages is really hard. Um, you know, it's really something that unless you've had one, you can't really understand. A lot of people think that, oh, well, you know, you were only a few weeks. Why is it so important? Because only a few weeks, your baby has a heartbeat. Only a few weeks, you're already thinking about baby names. You're already going through changes in your body, your hormones, your mind, and everything. And people don't understand that. They don't understand unless they've been through it. Um, I will say that my husband is so strong because he, you know, the whole time I, I would tell him, like, why, why aren't you upset? It doesn't seem like you care. Why don't you care that, you know, we've lost our baby? Why don't you care? But the whole time, he was being strong for me because I think that in his mind, he knew that if he broke down, it would make it worse for me. So thank you, David, for that. I appreciate it. Um, you know, moms or women who have not had kids yet because you have miscarried or, you know, um, if you've had a stillbirth or anything like that, you are still a mother. And you have those babies that are in heaven and those angels are watching over you every day of every, every moment of every day. Um, that's how I feel about mine. You know, I've had five and I feel like they're watching over me every day. Um, you know, watching over Alexander, my son, watching over my husband, um, watching over my family. Um, you know, for those of you that are very insensitive, towards miscarriages or anything like that, I want to say to you that it needs to stop. It really does. There is actually a month dedicated to pregnancy and infancy loss awareness. That's how important Sorry, my uh, camera cut off. Um, there is actually a month dedicated to this. That's how important it is. And for those of you who don't understand what we go through on a daily basis, I want you to maybe do a little research and just kind of see what we go through. Um, because really the amount of hurt that happens when you have a miscarriage or lose a baby is seriously sometimes unbearable. Sometimes even now, out of nowhere, I'll just start crying about it because I feel so upset. Um, you know, especially when I'm being attacked about my fertility. That is something that honestly that person is the worst person I've ever met in my life because of that. Can you even imagine how that made me feel? If you watch this, can you imagine how that made me feel? You can't because you haven't been through what I've been through. Anyways, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand. Um, men, if you are watching this, if you have a girlfriend or a wife, you know, your significant other, if, or, you know, even other women, if you have a girlfriend, wife, if they have a miscarriage, you aren't going to understand completely because you didn't feel that baby, you didn't feel the changes, you didn't feel any of that. So I want you to really think about, you know, what we're going through and be there for them as much as you can. That's really all you can do. Um, they may not want you to be there for them. They may not want to be around you. They may, you know, it, 
it just depends you know it depends on the hormones it depends how far along they were it really depends i know that there are women who have actually um you know miscarried later and had have had to give birth to their babies and i cannot even imagine going through that so for all of you women that have gone through that you are so strong you really are i mean i'm sitting here i haven't even gone through that i'm tearing up but you are so strong for doing that and going through that and making it through that um you know any woman who has had a miscarriage you are so strong for making it through it um remember do not give up unless a doctor actually says and make sure that you get a second opinion as well unless they say i can you cannot have children um you know i definitely wouldn't I would definitely get a second opinion first um, and then if you know you or even a third opinion and then if it comes to that point then okay but until then don't give up because you still have that chance you still have that chance to have that baby you can have that miracle baby even if you just have one and if you end up finding out that you can't there are so many children that are waiting to be adopted they are just waiting for somebody to you know save them and give them the life that they deserve so that's also an option um you know there's so many options out there there's people who get pregnant and they don't want their babies um so remember that that is an option and don't think that because you didn't give birth to that baby that that baby isn't your child that is still your child even if you have a surrogate or anything like that that baby is still your child um you know it's this is a very very hard topic for me to talk about i'm surprised that i'm even doing it but I really hope that this helps other women and I really hope that you guys you know find a little bit of comfort in this I really hope that you understand that you're not alone I hope that you know we can all come together and support each other help each other through it um, you know anything like that I really hope that we can do um, remember, you can email me, you can leave me a comment, um, if you want to talk about it. Um, there are forums on, like, um, a bunch of websites, like baby websites, where you can talk about that kind of stuff. I'm sure that your doctor can give you the names of counselors. I see a counselor. Um, I'm not afraid to say that. I do see a therapist, um, once a week. And I actually love it. Um, it really helps. I that I see her for other reasons too, not just because of my miscarriages, but um, I love it, and it really does help. Um, if you find that after losing a baby, you and your significant other are drifting apart, um, try to rekindle that. Because that is the one person that is going to be there for you and is going to help you through it. Don't push them away because that is just going to make things worse. Let them help you. Let them be there for you. Don't push them away. Again, I want to say thank you to my husband for being there for me through all five of them. Being there, you know, for when my son was born and everything genuinely do appreciate it and you know he really is my rock he really is my rock i'm so thankful to have somebody as strong as him because i was a wreck um this video is getting kind of long so i'm gonna go ahead and end it 
If any of you want to talk, email me, leave a comment, subscribe. Um, I know that this is a tough topic to talk about, but it really does help to get it out. It really helps. Um, you may want to cry. That's okay. Cry. You may feel angry. That's okay. Feel angry. You're going to feel sad. Feel sad. All of those emotions, feel them. Don't shut them out. Feel them. And remember, don't give up because you can have your miracle baby. I have mine. And that's proof right there that you can too. You really can. Um, thank you all for listening. I know that this was kind of a sad and depressing episode, but it's something that I really have wanted to talk about for a long time. I, you know, talked to my husband about it and was going back and forth. Um, again, this was not meant to offend anyone. This was not meant to hurt anyone's feelings. This is really just, I want other women to understand that you're not alone and that there are other women out there that will support you, help you, as well as your significant others, your husband, your wife, you know, whatever the case may be. Thank you all for watching. Remember to subscribe and um, if you feel upset after watching this, watch one of my babbling videos. Maybe it'll make you smile. Maybe it'll make you laugh. Um, maybe. I don't know. Uh, thank you all very much. I really appreciate you listening to this one because this is one of my most important videos other than the importance of family. This one, I would say, really tops my, you know, importance scale. This is really hard. Alright, I'm going to wrap it up because my camera just cut off again. Um, thank you all very much. Have a good night. Hope you all have a good new year. I hope that everybody has their new year's resolu resolutions ready and I hope that they aren't silly things like I'm going to eat healthy, I'm going to work out. I hope that they are things that are of importance. Um, thank you all very much. Have a good night.